So you get your laptop stolen and it's got confidential company data on it. Are you worried? Well, if you use a free Microsoft tool called BitLocker, you can reduce your risk. And that's the topic for today's video. But before we start, just a quick introduction as always. My name is Jonathan Edwards, also known as the Beta 365 Guy. Now, I help businesses all over the world with their Microsoft 365. You can find more information at beta365guy.com. And today's video is brought to you live from Manila in the Philippines. So let's take a look at a couple of different scenarios. Now, I've already talked about one. You get your laptop stolen, or maybe you just leave it on a train. Whoever finds it can simply remove the hard drive and get at your data. Not a good thing. Or let's look at another example. Funny story, actually. I once spoke to a business owner and they just bought lots of new computers for their business. And I said to them, um, what did you do with your old computers, by the way? And they said, oh, we sold them on eBay. And I said, with all the data on them? Yeah. Now, as I've said already, you can reduce your risk by using a free tool with Windows 10 or Windows 11 called BitLocker. And if you're a Microsoft 365 user, you can manage all of your BitLocker policies right inside of Intune. So how does BitLocker work? Well, BitLocker is encryption. And you should know by now that when you encrypt data, it scrambles it all up until someone comes along with the decryption key. Now today, in most modern day computers, there is a hardware chip inside it called a TPM chip. And the decryption key is stored on that chip. So if someone comes along and whips away the hard drive, that data can't be accessed. So now it's demo time. How can you use Microsoft 365 and Intune to encrypt all of your computers? Well, the first thing you're going to want to do is gather a report on all the computers in your business. Are they able to be encrypted? Is the TPM chip too old? Is the operating system too old? Are they already encrypted? How do you do that report? Let me show you now. Okay, so I'm logged in as a global admin to my Microsoft 365 test tenancy. So the first thing I want to do is go down to admin centers and endpoint manager. Now, once that launches, I'm going to go here to devices. And I'm going to go to monitor. And I'm going to click on here, device encryption status. So this is a really handy report before you start creating BitLocker policies. It will show you all your devices in your business, and it's going to give you some key information. The first bit of information is the TPM version. So here we are at 2.0. So your TPM needs to be 1.2 or later, okay? The encryption readiness, all my devices are ready to be encrypted, and the encryption status is not encrypted. So we're in a perfect position now to create our new BitLocker policy. Now, obviously, your report might look a lot different, especially if you've got older devices. Now, if that's the case, I would certainly look at creating some Entra ID device groups and putting all the devices that are ready and they have the right TPM version into a group. And then you can assign that BitLocker policy to that group. So that's the first bit. We look at the report and we see which devices can be encrypted. What do we do next? So now you've got your report, we're nearly ready to create our Intune policy. Now it's worth noting at this stage that your TPM chip needs to be 1.2 or later to have BitLocker enabled. Now if you're using Windows 11 inside of your business, Windows 11 already needs a TPM chip of 2.0. So you'll be okay. Let's hop over to Intune and create that policy. Now the chosen way I like to do it is called silently. I don't want lots of BitLocker pop-ups appearing on computer screens. If that happened, the IT support phone would be red hot. Okay, I'm back in Intune. Now there's a couple of ways that you can configure BitLocker. So the recommended way is the way I'm gonna show you. So we go to Endpoint Security. And you can see under manage, we've got a section here called disk encryption. So we're going to there 
and we will see that we've got no policies in place at the moment. So what I can do now is create a policy, select a platform, Windows, and select a profile. Now we've got two options. We've got BitLocker, or we've got something called Personal Data Encryption. Now, Personal Data Encryption, PD for short, is quite a new technology, and it only works in Windows 11 version 22 H2 or later. Now, with BitLocker, the hard drive and the data is encrypted until Windows boots up, and at that point, it's then decrypted. Personal Data Encryption does go a step further, and it works with Windows Hello for Business. And that means that the hard drive and the data is encrypted until the user authenticates with Windows Hello for Business. So it's taking BitLocker a step further. Now you can use both of these technologies together, and I will be creating a video all about personal data encryption. But for now, I'm gonna choose BitLocker, and I'm gonna click on Create. We then have to name our policy, so I'll do that now. And once we're happy, we will click on Next. Now we've got all these settings to configure. What I'll do, I'll just minimize all these sections so you can see them clearly. So we've got BitLocker, Drive Encryption, Operating System Drives, Fixed Data Drives, and Removable Data Drives. So let's start from the top. The first option is, do we require device encryption? The default is disabled, and if you leave it as not configured, it will take the default as disabled, but we want to absolutely enable that. The second option is to allow a warning if there's other disk encryption software installed on that device. So if you're using third-party encryption software, we can configure this to pop up and warn the user. Now, I'm a big fan of silently enabling and configuring BitLocker. I don't want users in my organizations to have pop-ups warning them of things, because if that happens, we're just going to get a lot of calls to the IT support desk. So I prefer silent installs. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to disable it. The next setting is allow standard user encryption. Now, in your business, people should be logging onto their devices as a standard user. They shouldn't be logging on with a local admin. If this is the case, then we can enable this, which means that BitLocker will still encrypt the devices even though it's a standard user account, okay? Configure recovery password rotation. Yes, and I'll show you this later. So I'm gonna choose refresh on Azure AD joined devices. It'd be nice if they change this to entry, wouldn't it? But there you go. Click on there, and that is the first section completed. So I'll minimize that one, and I'll go to the second section now. Now, this allows us to choose what type of encryption to use. Okay, click on here, and I'm going to enable this. And then we got to select the encryption method for fixed data drives, operating system drives, and removable data drives. Click on the drop down. We've got four options. The first one is AES, that's Advanced Encryption Standard. This is older type of encryption. This is the newer, more secure, and the default is 128-bit, but 256-bit is more secure. So I'm gonna choose that one. I'm gonna choose the same option for this one here. Now, we've got to choose the encryption method for removable data drives. Now, I don't believe you should really be allowing the use of these in your business, okay? I'm gonna leave this as the default. And this one here, I don't need to worry about that in this video. That's the second section complete. And now move on to the third one, which is operating system drives. So do we want to enforce the drive encryption type on the drives, okay? Yes, we do. This gives us another option here. So what type of encryption type do we want? Firstly, do we want the user to choose? Not really, no, I don't really want my users choosing what type of encryption type to use. Then we've got two options. We've got full encryption or we've got used space only. Now the used space only is to do with deleted data. So when you delete data from your disk, that data is no longer marked as used. So in theory, BitLocker wouldn't cover that. So I recommend doing full encryption. It will take longer to encrypt, but I think it's more secure. Now we've got a lot of options here about additional authentication at startup. Now, as I've explained, the way BitLocker works, someone powers on the laptop or the desktop computer, 
and BitLocker communicates with the TPM chip and it decrypts the device so the user doesn't have to do anything. As an additional security feature, you can make the user enter a PIN number when they switch on the device. And the hard drive won't decrypt until that user enters the PIN number. Okay, they'll get a screen similar to this one here. Enter the PIN to unlock this device. However, as I've said previously, I want to configure my BitLocker silently. I don't want users getting pop-ups or having to do anything, okay? If you do want to go down the additional startup pin, it is going to be more admin work for your IT team because in theory, they might have to go around all the computers and almost manually do BitLocker, okay? But require additional authentication at startup. We're going to say enabled because we want the TPM authentication. Allow BitLocker without a compatible TPM, okay? Again, I'm going to set this to false. If you've got a lot of devices, a lot of older devices in your business without a compatible TPM, you do need to think a bit more seriously about how you're going to enable BitLocker on those devices. So these here, these are about the PIN numbers. I'm going to choose this one here. I'm going to go into here, choose that one here. So these all aid my silent configuration, okay? If you start allowing these, we can't do it silently. Configure TPM startup. Yes, we do. We want to do choose that. Again, we're talking about PIN numbers now, so I'm going to leave these as not configured. Not configured, not configured, not configured. This one here, choose how BitLocker protected. We want to enable that one, and that's going to give us some more options here. Just scroll up here. Okay, we'll leave these two as the same here. Allow a data recovery agent. We will set that, keep that as false. Configure storage of BitLocker recovery information to ADDS. Yes, we will switch that on. Do not enable BitLocker until recovery information is stored. Okay, we'll switch that one on as well. Emit recovery options from the BitLocker setup wizard. Switch that on. Switch that on. Leave that as not configured, okay? So there's quite a lot of settings there, but we're happy. So I will go on to this section here. Okay, we've got the same one here. So yes, we want to enable it. Again, we've got this, so I'm going to select full encryption. We're going to enable this setting here. Okay, we're going to get all these options again. Switch that one on. Switch that one on. Switch that one on. Switch that one on. This is deny write access to fixed drives not protected by BitLocker. I'm going to set that as not configured, which will take the default of disabled. Okay, that is that section here. And then the final section, removable data drives. Again, I don't think you should allow these in your business, but I will go through these settings as well. Okay, we're going to enable that. We're going to allow users to apply BitLocker protection on devices. On here, I'm going to leave this as not configured. Scroll down a bit more. Keep that as false and not configure that as well, which will take the default as disabled. And that is it. Okay, click on next. Scope tags, assignments, my trusty little Windows 11 devices. Okay, click on next and save that policy. And there you have it. There's our BitLocker policy. Okay, just to show you an example of what some of these settings that we've configured look like in real life. So I've got a Windows 11 computer here. If I just go down to here and type bit, you can see at the top, I can go to manage BitLocker on the local PC. You can see that BitLocker is on, but it says here at the top, look, for your security, some settings are managed by your system administrator. So that system administrator is obviously Intune. Now if I just pop over to Intune to look at this PC within Intune, what does that look like? Okay. Here's the PC within Intune. Now, if I go down here, you can see recovery keys. And I've got my BitLocker key ID, and I've also got the recovery key for this device. So it's all stored within Intune. You might remember we configured all of that when we created the policy. Then if I go to Overview, I've also got another option here to rotate the BitLocker key. So if you're concerned about the security of a BitLocker key, maybe someone's downloaded them all into a spreadsheet for ease of use, then what you can do, you can come into here and you can quickly rotate it. So that essentially is BitLocker 
and in tune. Now you've created the policy and the PCs reboot, they will start to encrypt using BitLocker. I would recommend that you keep checking that report, keep checking the status of all your PCs in the business. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Look forward to seeing you again soon.